What claim does John Muir make in favor of protecting the burrowing owls? In this lesson, you will learn to evaluate the evidence an author presents by asking if an author's claims are sufficient and reasonable. So let's review. We've been reading The Little Owls That Live Underground by John Moyer. It's a nonfiction article that was published on Smithsonian.com in 2010. And in it, Moyer uses facts, anecdotes, and interviews to convey his message about burrowing owls. So let's review. Good readers do a couple things when they analyze a text. First of all, they determine um, the bias in a text. What, what side is the author arguing? What side is the author on? They also ask, what is the author arguing? And how good is his argument? Um, and in order to determine, to answer these questions, we need to find, um, we need to go through three simple steps. First, we need to reread and review the author's purpose and argument. Next, we need to ask, how does the author support this argument? Finally, we need to evaluate the author's claim by asking, is the evidence sufficient and reasonable? Let's dive in. So first, we need to ask, what is the author's purpose and argument? So first, I want to determine the author's purpose. We need to review um, that John Moore wants to inform us as readers, but I also want us to dig deeper into the text in order to determ determine if it's bigger than this. Conservationists have argued for years that the bird needs additional regulatory protection. Ironically, burrowing owls adapt well to living with humans. The owl supporters believe that with proper conservation measures, burrowing owls and people can readily live side by side. So I highlight this piece ironically um, because it shows that it's not just informative, right? It's also persuasive. Burrowing owls can adapt to living with humans. That last part, with humans. He's trying to be persuasive. So I can see that his purpose is to inform, but his use of ironically um, appeals to emotion. Uh, so this makes it a persuasive text as well. And his argument is that the birds are important enough to save and easy to save. So we should just do it, right? They're important. It's easy, we gotta just handle it, we got to just save them. That is John Moore's argument and his purpose is to inform and to persuade. So now I need to ask, how does the author support his argument? Let's dive in to the text. So if he's arguing that they are easy to save, so we are obligated to do it, how is he supporting it with evidence? Author and biologist Thomas Roberts, who has studied the bur burrowing owls, knows that with effective management, the bird can thrive in urban settings, especially in abandoned landfills, at airports, and at the margins of golf courses and athletic fields. The great irony, Robert said, is that the bird's ability to coexist with people puts it squarely in the path of suburban expansion. So here I see that he informs us that conservation is easy, right? He's saying we can exist side by side in urban settings, building up his, his John Muir's argument that they are easy to save. He says they're important and they're easy to save. This piece is really about they're easy to save. And it also begs the question of why not? Why wouldn't we do it if it's easy, which plays into persuasion. So here we see he's informing us, we can do it, um, and he's trying to persuade us. We have to, it's easy. <sighs> Again, this key part, effective management, it can thrive. And that, that sentence is just really like, boom. Um, before we move on, thinking through like, it both informs and persuades. I'm gonna continue to ask, how does the author support his argument? Um, so, in recent decades, as agricultural development and urbanization have spread across Western North America, the once numerous burrowing owl has declined in vast areas of the Great Plains in Canada. The burrowing owl is now listed as endangered in Canada, threatened in Mexico, and a national bird of conservation concern in the United States. In addition, nine states and four Canadian provinces identify the owl as endangered, threatened, or a species of national special concern. A subspecies that lives only in Florida is also accorded the same protections. Conservationists have argued for years that the bird needs additional regulatory protection. Ironically, burrowing owls adapt well to living with humans. 
The owl supporters believe that with proper conservation measures, burrowing owls and people can readily live side by side. So here again I see they are endangered. Part one of his argument, um, and he's supporting that by giving data about it declining. I can also see that John Muir is supporting the piece of his argument that says that they can be saved and they should be saved by saying they need additional laws and that they adapt while living with humans. Again, they, they are important to save, we need to save them, and it's possible. So by showing they are endangered, Muir validates the claim for more protection. And the owl's ability to adapt well with humans makes this easy, right? Again, supporting his argument, they are important enough to save and they are easy enough to save, just handle it. So how does the author support his argument continuing to build that evidence? Burning owl management is not inherently difficult, Barclay says. The owl has rather modest requirements and they can be met in a variety of say. A variety of settings, usually without vast acreages, right? Very straightforward. They need to be saved, they can be saved, and here is that and it's easy part. It's not that complicated. So Moyer continues to argue that it would be easy to save the owl by political will and by practical applications, right? And, and throughout the rest of this passage he says, it's just about the politics, right? It's just about political will and finding creative solutions, playing into Moyer's argument that like we can do this and we should do this because it's easy. Um, especially here at the end, we see um, this is a bird we should be able to accommodate even in the face of development. The challenge is not whether it can be done, but rather how to figure out how to do it. And throughout, this is I think is the best summary. That's why I put it, I highlighted it last of his argument. Right? They're important. They need to be saved, and there's no reason why we're not doing it. We gotta figure it out. So now I have to ask: Is the evidence sufficient and reasonable? So. Um, Conservationists have argued for years that the bird needs additional regulatory protection. Ironically, burrowing owls adapt well to living with humans. The owl supporters believe that with proper conservation measures, burrowing owls and people can readily live side by side, right? I feel like that's another really great summary of Moyer's argument. Is it sufficient? There's a wealth of evidence that the owl should be saved, right? A lot of facts about being endangered and just simply that we can. Reasonable? He argues that human um, that they're human for human friendly solutions, right? Owls and humans living side by side, which makes his argument both sufficient and reasonable. So now, what claims does John Muir make in favor of saving the owls? In the little owls that live underground, John Muir is makes a simple yet multifaceted argument in favor of saving burrowing owls. Moyer's primary claim is that the burrowing owl is not innately difficult to save, and thus it should be done through community and regulatory efforts. This claim is built on subclaims that the owl is endangered, unique, and interesting and that saving it is not inherently difficult. So in order to evaluate his evidence, we reread and reviewed the author's purpose and argument. We asked how does the author support his argument? And finally, we evaluated the author's claims by asking, is the evidence sufficient and reasonable? In this lesson, you have learned to evaluate the evidence an author presents by asking if the author's claims are sufficient and reasonable.